Hi, welcome to Exploring the Illusion of Free Will. My name is George, and today, today's topic is asking when a child gains it illuminates the incoherence of the concept of free will. Okay, and that's, that's an interesting uh, title, and uh, we'll, we'll, we'll explain it. Um, before we go into it, I just want to like briefly review why this matter of human will, this question of you know whether the human will is free or causal, is important. Uh, and naturally, you know, our show's perspective is that all evidence, bar none, um, indicates that our wills are causal, so that free will is an illusion. Um, that this this question is important because um, because our every behavior kind of depends on on how we we view our, our human nature. In other words, if if we if we act under the illusion that we have a free will, we're going to treat ourselves and each other differently, basically more unkindly, um, less compassionately, than if we understand that everything we do is compelled. It's not really up to us. Okay, so, and, and yeah, I want to go into this a bit more, you know, because like a lot of times people will confuse the term free will with the term will. In other words, um, when people say that they have a free will, they're actually saying that they have a will, not a free will. And um, the idea behind that is we, we make decisions all the time, okay? And, um, and these decisions are based on reasons, you know? Because if we were to make a, dec uh, um, a decision that wasn't based on a reason, that, you know, that's kind of like incoherent, you know, that the concept itself. How could you make a decision not based on some reason, you know, whether, whether the reason is unconscious or not? So um, the idea is that if we make um, a decision, and, and let's, let's say it were possible that, that there was no reason for it, then obviously it couldn't have been freely made, and if there is a reason for it, then that brings the um, the idea of causation of like if there is a reason for the decision, then there is a reason for the reason, and then there is a reason for that reason, and then this cause and effect chain of reasons go that go the reasons always go back in time. The reason will always precede the effect or the decision. So so if you have like a decision that's made and a reason for it and then a reason for that reason, and, you know, you follow that chain of causation back, it extends before the person was born, before the planet was created, you know, presumably before the Big Bang. And that, that, that idea of causality is, uh, is really the, the fundamental explanation of, of, of why our, our wills are not free. And again, the, um, when people say that they have a free will, what they're saying is that I can do. I can choose whatever I want. What I do is completely up to me. It's completely up to me, not up to anything else. And um, so, so what, what we actually have is a causal will. It really isn't up to us. It's up to so many factors that are not in our control at all. Um, one of the ways that we define human will, let's say free will, is like. If we have a free will, then that means we're responsible. We're essentially responsible for our acts. We're fundamentally responsible. It's not that we, you know, hold ourselves responsible, but that we actually are responsible. And if we have a causal will, that means that no, we may hold ourselves responsible, you know, to um, uphold civilization, to have certain order, but that's just a convention you know, because we don't know any better for whatever reason, but, but the fundamental reality is um, that we're not responsible, that, you know, that maybe the, the universe, you know, God or the universe may be responsible <laughs> for our actions. And, and that's a question because like, the universe may not have a free will. You know, that's, you know, that's beyond the scope of this show. We're going to do a show on that, though, because that's, that's a very interesting question. Anyway, so, like, the idea is, like, so if we're responsible for acts, and that's a definition of um, 
of free will, you know, we have a free will if we're responsible for our acts. Then the question becomes, and this is the theme of the show, um, all right, we, we, we all agree that a one-year-old infant, a one-year-old child, does not have a free will. Okay, that's something, again, the number, I mean, like, you know, or, or it does not have a free will in the sense of responsibility, especially. In other words, you can't hold a, a one-year-old responsible for a moral decision, for, for soil in itself, or peeing on you, or whatever. You, you can't, you know, we all agree that, that uh, an infant, a one-day-old infant, doesn't have responsibility, and therefore, you know, isn't responsible, doesn't have a free will, okay? Now, if we start from that premise, that, that premise that no one would object to, um, then the question, and, and just before we go into that, naturally the reason that infant doesn't have a free will is because they don't have the, the, the capacity, they don't have the experience, the, the, the brain development, you know, all these reasons. So then the, the, the question becomes, if, if a one-year-old doesn't have a free will, at what point, at what moment, at what age, what would have to happen? What, what would have to happen for, the, for a human being that doesn't have free will to suddenly acquire it? Um, and that, that question is fraught with so much um, contradiction and confusion because, like, we might say, well, you know, a child will, will develop free will when the child, um, let's say, has a certain amount of knowledge, gains a certain amount of experience with his world. And then all of a sudden he goes from being a, a human being that has absolutely no control over his will, you know, that is not responsible to a human being that is responsible. Okay, but then like if that's the case, then like, then you have, let's say, a person who, um, a child who has acquired much more knowledge than another child having more of a free will. You know, so that, that would mean that like some people have a more, more of a free will and then, you know, if, if a person like is, is very, you know, ignorant you know, or almost completely ignorant, they have absolutely no free will. Or, or another way is like um, level of intelligence. You know, somebody might say, well, you know, the, um, a child, an infant, one day old infant doesn't have much intelligence um, or maturity, intellectual maturity. You know, it, its rational thought processes haven't developed yet. So then we ask, well, when does that, when might that happen? Okay, like at what age? And, and so that means that one child might develop a free will before another child. Um, okay, um, <laughs> this, I mean, this, asking that question just invites so many confusions. Then, you know, what, what about a, a person who's brain damaged? Do they, um, you know, it, it would be presumed that they don't have a free will if, if, the, if the, you know, there's a physical damage to the brain or if they're, they're mentally challenged and all. But, um, but the, the very intriguing part of this question is, um, amounts, you know, relates to the moment, the moment that a child would go from not having a free will to having a free will. And again, this relates to causality. Okay, this relates to causality because like it's not just about a child's um, intellectual development, um, amount of experience, maturity, et cetera. It's not just that those aren't the only things that prevent a child, you know, an infant, a one day, day old <laughs> infant from having a uh, free will. The other factor that in is, is inescapable is that that one-day-old child, as with a five-year-old child and a ten-year-old child and an adult, is within the physical universe that is completely governed by causality. Okay, that means, like, in science, we understand that, um, that causality is the fundamental process in the universe. Okay, without causality, there would be no change. Change is the fundamental process. In other words, change is like a, a molecule, an atom, a particle, being in one place at one time, 
than in another place the next moment, whatever. That's, that's what change signifies, that the universe is not static. Okay, it's, it, it changes, and the fundamental process that explains this change is causality, that things cause things to change, things cause things to happen, and everything has a cause. So, you know, with the child, if we, if we acknowledge, if we agree that a one-day um, old infant, infant doesn't have a free will, um, then like we would have to, and, and then like if, if we want to assert that at a certain age, whether that age is two, five, ten, whatever, the, 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 the child suddenly acquires um, free will, from within the context of causality, we've got, we've got ex we, we would have to explain, well, how does that child all of a sudden circumvent the, um, the laws of nature, this fundamental law of nature that is cause and effect. Um, and uh, as you, you know, if, if you would like explore that, you, you, you'd realize that it's impossible. You, you can't have a child, um, you can't have a child, a human being, you can't have anything in the universe, whether it's living or not, uh, circumventing, um, overcoming the causal nature of the universe. Um, <laughs> Um, all right. For for those of us who who may not accept uh, causality as as um, as being the fundamental process that everything you know in the universe is governed by it, um, consider the alternative. If things aren't caused, then they would be quote unquote random. And random has randomness has certain various different definitions. In other words, like you can like go into a, a ball of, uh, a bowl of, let's say, ping pong ball, balls and pick one out randomly, but that's just a matter of speech. In other words, you're not without expressed intention, but, but the whole process actually is causal. You know, it's not, you know, basically, the idea is like, if, if things are not causal, then how could they come to be? You know, like, if something is not caused, if a, if a child's decision, if, if our decision, if anything in the universe is not caused, how could it come to be? How, how could it happen? You know, how, nothing happens that isn't caused. That's, that's the key um, understanding here. So when you, when, you, when you understand that, when you understand that everything has to be caused, including the causes of causes, you know, then you understand how it would be pretty impossible for, um, for a child to go from not having a free will at one year old to, you know, by, by acquiring. It's as if like acquiring more intelligence or more maturity, more knowledge or something somehow would allow the child to, to circumvent this, this basic law of nature, this, this law of causality. Okay. Um, so, all right, so I, I think, I think we've, we've gained an understanding of how, you know, if, if we accept that a child, you know, one years old, doesn't have a free will, it's pretty impossible that all of a sudden, at a certain age, that child would, would suddenly be able to have a free will. Um, okay, um, now, why is this important? Okay, I got a lot of time in the show <laughs> to explain this. I mean, some of, some of these topics are pretty easy, to, uh, or they take a long time to explain this one. Not so, not so much. Um, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to like actually um, go to some various, you know, miscellaneous considerations. I mean, I I could talk about you know why this question is is very important, and you know, in other words, it, it represents just a a leap. In, in the evolution of the human mind, you know, as a matter of fact, maybe I should talk about this. Um, you know, very perplexingly, you know, evolution, we, you know, we have been, we have been predetermined by the past, by, you know, um, the past that controls everything, to believe um, that we have a free will, to, to buy into this illusion of free will, to basically, you know, 
get wrong the most fundamental nature, um, characteristic of human nature, you know, our volition, the nature of our human will. Okay, we've, we've been predetermined. That's that, you know, that hasn't been up to us. We didn't decide to get it wrong, just like we didn't decide to, to get that the earth was flat wrong or that the um, sun revolves around the earth wrong. This has like been predetermined, and like for, for millennia, we have held this, this illusion. And so think about it. Imagine what it would mean to, for our world, not just some philosopher, some psychologist, you know, most physicists understand that, um, that human will is impossible because they understand the, you know, that physics um, controls everything. And actually, I should address this one thing, because sometimes people will assert that, well, physics relates to the physical world, but then our thoughts and feelings and decisions are actually, quote unquote, spiritual. You know, they're outside of physical law. But when you think about it now, they're, they're not. And I'll tell you why. Because um, in physics, in reality, in nature, there is such a thing as time. And as Einstein demonstrated, it's actually space-time. Like, time and space are actually one entity, you know, that you can see it from, you know, I, I, I guess because, like, space requires time and time requires space. Uh, you can't have one without the other. But uh, the idea here is that with time, <laughs> with time, you lose your train of thought. <laughs> <laughs> All right, wait a minute. Um, oh, yeah. So, like, some people will claim that our, our thoughts, our decisions, are outside of this physical law. But you have to remember, you have to consider that every decision we make, however spiritual it might be, and in this case, we're, we're defining spiritual as that which we can't detect or measure physically, like a, a, a thought, you know, like, you know, a feeling, whatever. I mean, sometimes we can um, measure feelings, you know, um, neurobiologically, whatever, but, you know, that there's the assertion that some things are spiritual and hence um, the laws of nature don't apply. But, again, that's mistaken because, like, even if you define a human decision as being spiritual, that decision will have to take place within a moment within a specific moment in time. Okay, think about that. So if the decision is being made within a certain particular moment, it is within time. It, 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 you know, at, at that moment, you know, if, if you recognize that, you recognize, no, that, that spirit, just the spiritual nature of the decision does not um, preempt it or um, allow it to circumvent time. Another way to understand this is, um, or let's say you might have a, a decision and you refer to it as spiritual, okay, so you, you assert, you claim that it's outside of space-time, it's outside of laws of nature, outside of causality, but think about it in this way. Uh, the most fundamental way of understanding why free will is impossible, why everything is causal, why cause and effect governs everything, is like to consider the entirety of the universe. Okay, the, I mean, and so when I say the entirety, you know, regardless of whether the universe is finite or infinite, you know, whatever is, that's what we're, you know, considering here. So you've got the, the universe at one moment in time completely determining the universe at the next moment in time. Okay, and then that moment in time, the state of the universe at that moment in time will completely determine the state of the universe at the subsequent moment in time. Okay, and then naturally this chain of cause and effect that involves the entire universe goes backwards. You know, in other words, you have the, this moment in time was the complete result of the previous moment in time, and the previous moment in time was the result of the state of the universe at the moment before that. Stretch that chain of causation back and, um, you know, extends to the Big Bang and perhaps before. That's something we, we don't know. But the, the, the consideration here is that if a decision that we might define as spiritual is taking place within an exact, precise moment 
in the universe, it can't escape. It's, it's in the universe, because the universe, by definition, is everything that there is, spiritual and material, whatever. So if it's occupying a specific place within the universe, it's defined by that specific exact state of the universe. That will lead to the, um, to the subsequent state, and that was caused by the previous state. Okay, so basically I'm trying to describe how de defining something as spiritual a decision is spirit, spiritual because it resides within a specific moment in time. It does not allow that decision to escape causality. Okay, um, what else? So yeah, we're we're going to talk about what are we? Oh yeah, we're going to talk about again. Again, this is like, I mean, this is this is major. Like if the, what's the, the the quote at the beginning of the show? Um, you know, this is this is bigger than. Um, than Einstein, Copernicus, Galileo, Newton, um, uh, uh, Darwin. You know, this is huge. And this is like the, the statement of John Searle, a, a pretty famous American um, philosopher. And it's true. It's true. I mean, we've got, you know, we've got evolution in the sense of um, our physical bodies evolving. You know, people are getting taller. Um, we're losing our hair. You know, we're becoming, our brains are getting bigger, all this stuff. This happens, like, over the course of, of well, you know, millions of years, actually. But, but you know, there, are, there are changes that happen more um, within decades. For example, yeah, people today are generally taller than people 100, 200 years ago. It's you know, result nutrition, whatever. But so there's an evolution of, of our bodies, but now there's also an evolution of our minds. You know, we are actually becoming more intelligent as a species. Um, but this, this, you know, to, to, um, to shift to to move from our mistakenly perceiving the nature the fundamental nature of our human will as being free of causality free of reasons free you know completely up to us free of, of factors not in our control to um to the accurate understanding uh that that our wills are causal, that our wills are not free, that, that essentially, you know, reality is like a movie, that everything that's happening, not just, not just the particles around us, because we, you know, everybody, everybody pretty much acknowledges that um, the physical state of the universe is causal. And again, some people may claim that um, quantum um, mechanics has some randomness, but if you consider that, you know, what they're claiming is that some events are not caused, and that's, that's an absurd conclusion. It's just like, it's not, you know, it's not founded on reason, it's not founded on evidence. Um, and I, I gotta go into this a bit. Um, what happens is sometimes with quantum behavior, um, they can't detect, like, the simultaneous position and momentum of a particle in order to, to use the classical physics, the Newto Newtonian uh, physics, to draw accurate um, predictions. So what happens in those cases, they rely on probabilities, which means that instead of measuring the, uh, m the movement of one particle, they measure the movement of groups of particles, you know, and, and determine their behavior through probabilities as opposed to exact measurement of each one or even of the group. So, um, so the idea, though, is like, you know, it's still causal. I mean, you know, this, this, um, this quantum behavior, um, we may not know, we may not know the factors that, that um, contribute to a particle's, you know, being in one place and then all of a sudden being in another, but that, that ignorance of, of the, the um, agents impinging upon the um, particle um, in no way um, leads to the conclusion that, that the particle behavior isn't caused. You know, because naturally, to the, the, the idea that, that particle behavior wouldn't be caused, it's incoherent. How could something not be caused? <laughs> this, <laughs> I, gotta, I, I didn't mention this in this show. I, um, couple of, I, I taped a couple of shows in the morning, and then I went out <laughs> and got some coffee. And I don't drink coffee, and I'm a little wired because of it, <laughs> which is like, it's, it's interesting. It's kind of like, um, some, sometimes it makes thinking a bit harder in a way. All right, so anyway, back to the, so like this, again, um, transitioning, transcending the illusion of free will 
will um, will be a huge major um, step in in the evolution of of mankind um, of humankind it's um, and it will it will generate profound changes in our civilization right now everything from our criminal justice system to how we raise kids to to how we reward um, what we do, you know, our economy, our economic activity, that's all based on the mistaken premise that human beings have a free will. And, you know, when you consider that, like, this illusion of free will leads to people blaming each other and blaming themselves and all and, and you know, holding people responsible, you can understand why, you know, there are wars in the, this world and there's so much conflict and all. You know, if we're, if we're like, you know, mistakenly blaming ourselves and others for, for stuff that you know, we have absolutely no control over, and then acting on that blame aggressively, it's going to create a much, much more aggressive, hostile world than if we were to transcend that, this illusion, this free will illusion, and understand that, um, that everything we do is completely compelled. Okay, so um, again, I think we, we understand, we can understand how, like, you know, if we ask ourselves, how a one-year-old child, who we all understand does not have free will, could possibly, you know, somehow transcend the law of nature or at some point, because of intelligence, would ever achieve free will. We, we, we understand the incoherence of that, the impossibility of that. We, we can understand um, through that perspective why free will is impossible. Uh, <laughs> Okay, um, if you want to see the shows online, log into um, causalconsciousness.com. And we're just going to be, we're going to, you know, there's so many ways to understand how our free will is an illusion, how our wills are causal, and we'll be getting into them as the shows progress. Thanks for watching.